I am not doing well, guys. Let's get that out up front. A lesser podcast host wouldn't even be doing an episode for this week. But I am dedicated to you guys and to my relationship with you and to my crap. No, I'm kidding. I have a comedy special coming out in a few months. Listen, we got to keep the engagement going. The best thing that has ever ever happened to my career is this blood clot i i just i just thank god for it um listen if your career with you know just needed a little bit of a boost needs to go to that extra level i really consider getting a blood clot i mean this has my engagement is through the roof i've got all these new listeners to the podcast now because people just want to see if i'm still alive they're really enjoying this season of Jen's crazy life. You know, that's what they do on mediocre sitcoms. They always, you know, it, when they kind of run out of ideas and if the ratings are have just kind of plateaued, someone ends up in a coma or gets sick, right? It's either oh, yeah. that. Somebody's dying. <laughs> or their evil twin shows up. So, I mean, and I'm open to that too. If God wants to send, you know, my evil twin comes and like causes chaos, like that's fine too. But right now we have a blood clot <laughs> and I, this engagement, you guys should look at my numbers on Instagram. I'm blowing up. I'm blowing up, um, you know, from this blood clot. And I'm just, <laughs> if I felt better, I would, I'd be really excited about this. So <laughs> today will be a little bit of a different episode. Um, it's just going to be, let's just chat. I'm not sure how much I will stick to the scheduled things that we're supposed to be talking about because I really don't feel well and it has something to do with the blood clot or maybe the medicine I'm on or maybe a third mystery problem <laughs> that we haven't uncovered. Um, so if I seem a, a little more ADD <laughs> rambling or out of breath this episode, it's because I have felt like I am at death's door for the past two to three weeks. Um, and I actually literally was at death's door until we got the DVT diagnosis. If you missed the previous episode, episode 192, you absolutely have to listen to at least the second half of that. About halfway through, about 41 minutes into the episode, I told the story of how I got this diagnosis of a very, very serious deep vein thrombosis that had no symptoms total god thing that i got the diagnosis so be sure to listen to that episode 192 the previous one if you missed it so we'll talk we'll we'll talk about what's going on with me and what you can learn from the dumpster fire <laughs> that is my life and and i you know what i i think my take here is going to be when your life is very difficult and one thing after another keeps happening to you you must embrace the dumpster fire Stop wishing your life wasn't a dumpster fire because it is. And the best way you are going to be able to get through this is just throw a party in the dumpster fire. <laughs> that's just what you have to do. That, that, I think that's really going to be kind of my main takeaway because that, that'll drive you crazy. That will drive you crazy if you think, you know, it, 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 if you wish that your life were good in any way, if you wish that, anyone in your house was healthy because that by the way my my son my youngest has had a fever of 104 for multiple days he's a little better now but he missed a full week of school while i was dealing with all of this super high fever just constant insanity so you know you can't like wish you had a life like everyone else's like all of your neighbors and your in-laws and all these other people in your life you know they're out there winning it's like you everyone in your house is sick you're sick and can't figure out what's going on. You, oh, oh, the medicine I need to be on is like 700 something dollars a month. Ugh. I might touch on that. So you've got all that going on. And then it's like your sister-in-law is like, oh my gosh, I bought this bikini for our trip to the Maldives, but the bikini's too big, you know, because my <laughs> diet is just working so well. You can't wish you had her life because like fate is just against you right now. I don't know. I sound like one of the ancient Greeks, but it's like, I don't know what to tell you. The, or the Oracle of Delphi has spoken against you. You might as well just embrace it. Okay, I'm getting too deep into the topic. We're still in setup. I'm also going to talk about um, the Taylor Swift Super Bowl. 
and Taylor going to the Super Bowl and all that. That's that's the big talk. So we'll talk about that. And then um, we also we have to talk about Caitlin <laughs> posted on her Instagram stories. She volunteered to get tased. She was tased like with a taser. Yep. <laughs> um, we're going to make that about me. Um <laughs> And just how, like, I have cooler friends than everyone else. Like, uh, well, you know, how many of your friends have volunteered to be tased? Zero? <laughs> yeah, well, some of us run in different circles. So uh, so we'll get to that. It's going to be, this will either be the best or the worst episode we've ever done. And welcome to it. This is the Jen Fulweiler Show. This is the, uh, whatever you, podcast? That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> this is the thing where you learn the art of the village hustle. That's being a hot girl, girl boss, or hot boy, boy boss. Who knows that love and family and community are the foundations of all true success. We publish new episodes every Wednesday without fail, even when I'm dying of <laughs> either a blood clot or the blood clot medication's not working. <laughs> Whatever. We still have hot, <laughs> fresh content for you. And I am your host, Jen. I am a mom of six best-selling author and stand-up comedian and our lovely producer here is caitlin white we do bonus content on the patreon it's a lot of fun we really have a lot of fun with the patreon patreon.com slash this is jen is how you help me pay for the 700 dollars a month medication that by the way I need to be on for life. I need to be on this medication yeah. for life. So yeah, join the Patreon. <laughs> Far be it from me to not, I, I'm not going to miss an opportunity to <laughs> plug my Patreon, uh, even if I have to shamelessly use a medical emergency <laughs> to plug it. <laughs> the link is also in the show notes. Okay, but before we get into the dumpster fire that is my uh, general well-being and my life, um, <laughs> let's go into, so... Taylor Swift is maybe going to be at the Super Bowl. We we don't know because she so she's performing in Japan the day before. But the time change works in her favor because Japan is way earlier. So she might be able to jump on her jet and then fly to Vegas where the Super Bowl is being played. Obviously, she was there when the Chiefs won the game that sent them to the Super Bowl. Caitlin, you can put up that picture here on YouTube. JF on YouTube.com. By the Aww. way, it takes it takes like fully ten seconds if you go to JF on YouTube.com for it to take it uh, for for it to take you to my YouTube page because everything in my life is stymied right now. <laughs> my my URLs are stymied, um, but eventually it'll come up. Okay, so yeah, this is a, a now very famous picture of. Taylor whispering to Travis Kelsey after he won the game that that would send the Chiefs to the Super Bowl. And what's interesting is I, I have you guys heard what she actually said? I it, have. It's, yeah, it's so been well, yeah, it's, it's been released. And what she said is um, she said, if you want to do something really impressive, <laughs> get Jen an appointment at her hematologist. <laughs> That's actually what she said. And, and then Travis came back and he was like, listen, I can win a Super Bowl. Um, but I can't, I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I don't have That's impossible. <laughs> Again, we'll go into that a little later. Um, I, I've not, I, I was diagnosed more than a week ago and I, I can't get in with my hematologist. They are, um, there it's like, if you've ever seen the Lord of, uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, where it's like, <laughs> they've got to get the, the little ring to the, to the flaming eye, but it's really hard. And it's this whole epic journey. Um, that's child's play. That's nothing compared to what it takes to get an appointment at my hematologist's office. Okay, so um, it's funny how up in arms a lot of sports fans are about the idea of Taylor Swift being at the Super Bowl. What's interesting is plenty of celebrities go to Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. There's, I mean, that uh, I, a bunch of rappers like Travis Scott was at the Michigan game when Michigan played their big game a few weeks ago. I mean, that's a totally normal thing for big celebrities to be at the Super Bowl. But if you follow any NFL accounts or meme pages or whatever, people are very upset about the idea of Taylor being there. You can take the pic down, <laughs> Caitlin. And, 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 and they, they say that the cameras show her too much. I think the cameras show Taylor for a grand total of maybe 30 seconds out of the entire football game. And plus, it brings more attention to the sport. If you like the sport, then why wouldn't you want 
more fans to discover it? Why wouldn't you want more people to to encounter this sport? Here's my theory. I was trying to think, why do people get so much more upset about Taylor Swift being at a Super Bowl as opposed to any other celebrity? And I, I think it's they it's that they resent the godlike power that she has mm-hmm. and she has a truly <laughs> yeah. godlike power over women and and so i think it's like she ju- she just has way more social power than other celebrities and it feels like a disturbance in the force it feels <laughs> like she's not like a, a normal celebrity and what's funny about that is that in order to have that kind of social power that you can take over the Super Bowl, the the biggest event like ever in the galaxy and have people all upset that your presence is actually taking over this massive event. You you have to be doing something really special. And that is, I think, worth looking at. I think that Taylor Swift is doing something that we can all learn from. And whether you love her or hate her, I, I think there is a certain magic that she is capturing that is actually very interesting. And that was so well articulated on this podcast I heard. It's the podcast called The Daily. I think it's from the New York Times or something. Anyway, this author, Taffy Brodesser Ackner, Aikner? I hope I'm pronouncing that. Sorry, Taffy. <laughs> Taffy Brodesser Ackner. Um, she was on The Daily talking about how, you know, she's a New York City career woman, not really typically the in the demographic of who would be the the Taylor Swift, um, have the profile of being a Taylor Swift fan. Uh, I think a lot of people think of Taylor Swift fans as being young girls. They broke up with a boy, so now that's why they're into Taylor Swift. And that's why I, I like this woman, because I'm also not in the classic Taylor Swift fan demographic. And I think that this woman articulated something really interesting, that again, th- this really isn't about Taylor Swift. It's about how all of us engage with the world around us. So Taylor, uh, Taylor, see this guys, I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing well. N- now I am calling Caitlin Taylor just because she's hot I'll like Taylor it. Swift. <laughs> Does, she's better than Taylor Swift. She volunteered to get tased. We're also both Sagittarius. So I'm practically Taylor Swift. Is that really? <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. That's right. Cause you know, if, if Pluto was in Uranus <laughs> at the right time, I mean, that's going to impact things and it's going to, <laughs> I think that you're going to be dating a famous football player too soon. We're working on that. Well, we're we've, we're going to set up Caitlin with Aaron Rodgers, and because and she's a Sagittarius, so it will work. <laughs> okay, Caitlin, listen, guys. Okay, actually, full disclosure here. Hit the special sound effect for when I'm going to open up about something. That's this is my. I'm opening up sound effect for the first time in my over decade of experience as a broadcaster you know i had a daily two-hour talk show solo talk show talk radio on sirius xm and i've been podcasting forever um we actually just had to pause this episode because i'm doing that badly um if i hadn't just been in the er i would go to the er right now but instead i'm going to keep podcasting so if i'm calling people by the wrong names and saying the wrong things it's just because i'm dying don't worry about it okay play this clip <laughs> no big deal for, yeah to play this clip from the daily clip one it was mm-hmm. those lyrics are so staggering to me in a way that when someone else is writing your songs for you it never quite goes there mm-hmm. because what leaves when someone else is writing music for you what leaves when you're trying to figure out how to make a hit is specificity. Right. Specificity is out the window because you want every song to be a number one. You want everyone to understand it. Right. And what she understands is that actually it's specificity that we've been missing from our songs. Man, that's good. Uh, and of course, it's on the on a fast speed. That's not what Taffy's voice actually <laughs> sounds like. But I am an impatient person. So that's a screen record of from when I listen to the podcast and I listen to everything on high speed. I actually, I got annoyed that... Um, my meditation app won't let me put it on 2x <laughs> speed because I want it to be like, relax, close your eyes. Like, come on, get we got to get going. I need inner peace right now. I don't have time for this. Um, so yes, that was on a high speed. Um, that is so interesting what, what this journalist points out there, that the reason that Taylor Swift has so much social power that it's, it's like driving NFL fans insane 
is that with what she puts out into the world, in her case, it's it's her art, but this is true of any of us putting anything out into the world. It's it's very specific. It's very personal. And and what this uh, reporter is is pointing out is that when a musical artist is just trying to make a hit, just just trying to write something that will be really popular, you don't bring specifics into it because that that will kind of alienate some group of people. If you want a hit, it should, I mean, frankly, like 50 cents in the <laughs> club, one of the greatest <laughs> hits of all time. I, I truly believe it is a masterpiece of humanity. Put it up there with Mozart. I love that song, <laughs> but that is more of a classic hit. And frankly, like her song, um, Taylor Swift, I mean, she has, what's the player's going to play, play, shake it off. Yep. <laughs> um, that's more like a classic. It's just meant people are meant to dance and be silly to it. Um, so these are speaking about general things just being rolling up to the club or um just you know people annoying you and you need to shake it off those are those are very very general things but then if you listen to her songs like illicit affairs Mm -hmm. or exile it's like oh she wrote that about someone (laughs) real specific and and as as you see her get deeper in in her own career and catalog of work i mean she start she's naming streets like cornelia street uh she's like talking about um meeting you on the upper east side phone lights up in the back where you at uh like a bar she describes the bar i'm like that's okay, so that wasn't <laughs> like, okay, uh, this is a very specific thing. And here's the thing. When you are trying to resonate with people on any level, whether you're starting a podcast and like, and maybe you aspire to be like me, you're like, you know, Jen gets nine views on every <laughs> YouTube video and I'm, and I'm trying to get to that level of success, but I kind of, I just don't know where I would start to, you know, be that successful. Um, or it's just like, let's say you just, kind of wish you had more friends you know you're trying to fit in a little more at maybe meet some moms at the park or at your kid's school or at at the church or just any time you are trying to resonate with a wider group of people you're, you're trying to get more likes on your instagram anything you're trying to do the taylor swift lesson is make it personal and make it specific um you, you know let's say i i know someone who's um She's on Instagram and she's trying to be kind of a social media uh, consultant doing things like helping businesses get more traction or whatever. You can say generic things like, hey, start with this. Your hook needs to be this. But but I think when you start just being more personal and specific, here's my background. Here's my story. Yes, you will alienate some people. Absolutely. But the people who resonate with you will love you and that is a great start and and the way you apply that let's say you're not an artist you're not trying to grow your instagram but but you would just like to meet more people i think the translation there of of the the taylor swift lesson is maybe you just dress in a way that you honestly love and would be a little different to people you know maybe you put on like this outrageous uh, flamingo shirt because you just love it. You think that's really fun. And you think that flamingo shirts and plaid pants are the move. That is that is what everyone should be doing. You just absolutely love it. Well, there are going to be some people who are like, I definitely do not want to talk to that woman. You know, she's obviously crazy. She's like not my style. I've got my chic Chanel outfit on and I do not want to speak to her. But then there are going to be people like me who run up to you and say, we have to be friends immediately. This is incredible. Everything about your outfit is working. That's specificity. That is you bringing a a very specific side of your personality into the forefront for other people to see. It has worked for Taylor Swift and it can work for you. So I I think that that, again, that um, interview was on the daily. And I just think that this woman in talking about what Taylor Swift is doing right, has really nailed something that all of us can do right in every area of life. I, I really encourage you to listen to that. So there's one more clip, another power clip. I actually screen recorded this just for my own personal use. 
And and then I thought, oh, my podcast friends need to hear this because this is incredible. Okay, so Caitlin, now that I know your name, um, <laughs> play the second clip. All great art is the art that sees you. And I know this from doing a million celebrity profiles. And I know this from my understanding of fandom that if you, if you show somebody that they are real, you have them for life. She has me for life. Oh, isn't that incredible? Mm -hmm. Play it again. That honestly, that is so moving to me. I I, I want to make sure you guys hear that because it this applies to all of us. It's so good. I I find that clip deeply moving. Did you find it moving, Kate? Oh, yeah, yes, absolutely. she's obliged yes. to say yes, but she did. <laughs> no, but I did. <laughs> she did. She's like, I it's it's almost as good as getting tasered. It's like <laughs> incredible. Okay, play it again. All great art is the art that sees you. And I know this from doing a million celebrity profiles, and I know this from my understanding of fandom, that if you, if you show somebody that they are real, you have them for life. Yeah. She has me for life. Ah, if you show somebody that they are real, you have them for life. And so what does she mean by that? Let's unpack that. I, I think showing somebody that they are real, I think what the, the way I would interpret that is you open up about something, about some side of you that not everyone has, the, the side of you that thinks that wearing plaid pants and a flamingo shirt is incredible. Or for some of you, I'm always telling you to go wear a bright red lipstick. So maybe you do that and it feels a little outrageous and then you strike up a conversation with someone else who would, thinks that that's a great lipstick or whatever. Or, or maybe you are creating content. Maybe you're a songwriter, you're trying to grow your Instagram, whatever. When you show the world some side of yourself that might not be accepted by everyone and you turn it into art, and, and I don't mean art like something you hang in a museum or even necessarily something you put on an album. But to me, art is just taking something in the human experience and packaging it so that it resonates with people. That's a great definition of art. Oh, is yeah, it not absolutely. hit the Jen spinning hot fire <laughs> sound effect even as she's dying? <laughs> we had that. We had our best men create that special sound effect. Um, man, if this is my last podcast episode, because I can't going get an with appointment <laughs> with my hematologist, we're going out with a bang. This one's hot fire. It's just, I'm just spitting hot fire left and right. Um, that's what I think all art is, whether it's music, uh, art you hang on a wall, stand up comedy, whatever, uh, dancing. I, I think it is taking something powerful from the human experience of a story or a moment or an emotion in packaging it in a way that other people can internalize that emotion also. And that's how you can create art out of your experience. It again, even in like you're showing up to the PTA meeting and you just wear that crazy outfit that you like that's creating art to me. That is art actually. And what you do in those moments is you show other people that they are real and that, and, and it doesn't work for everyone. Like Taylor Swift, honestly, and for as many fans as she has, she has as many haters that I think that's actually another, that's sort of the elephant in the room of all this is that a lot of people hate her. Again, look at all the NFL meme accounts. They hate her. So, you won't show everyone that they're real. But when you are authentic and you turn that authenticity into art in some way or another, through what you wear, through what you say, through your podcast, your social media, the songs you write, the paintings you paint, you will find your people and you will show them that they are real. If you walk up in that crazy outfit to the mandatory parent information session at my kid's school and I see you, 
you have made me feel real because I would look at you in that crazy outfit and I would think, okay, maybe I don't own a flamingo shirt and, and plaid pants, but I have that in me to want to be that daring, to want to be that different, to want to not care what anyone at this meeting thinks about my fashion choices. And you have validated for me that I'm not the only one. And in that moment, we've created our own little village here. That's what Taylor stop? Swift is. What? I said, do you ever stop with a good content? I see. And I did. Th- th- yes. And I didn't even pay <laughs> Caitlin to say that. No. <laughs> no, see, this is God is with me because I'm probably going to die because my hematologist won't let me get an appointment. I feel terrible. So it's like, might as well make this one count. If episode 193 is the last one, might as well make it count. Um, I mean, essentially it is. You're kind of creating a village there when, when you're your authentic self and you show you show people that they are real. There's this moment of like, wow, we're the same. And you make other people think, wow, I'm not alone. And there's a price to that. The price you pay for that is judgment from other people. So you you don't get to have the experience of creating that village and showing other people that they are real without the cost of removing yourself from someone else's village. Because there there might be a judgy mom there who wants everyone to be more cookie cutter and just due to her own issues is she just judges people who are a little different. And so, yeah, she will sit there and she will whisper to her friend, like, look at that. Oh, my gosh. Like, let's make sure that we don't invite her to the bake sale. You know, I mean, that that's going to happen. The price for creating your own village is being rejected from someone else's village but it's always worth it to be your authentic self and then attract the people who just really love that authentic side of you so that is what we can learn from taylor swift but by the way as an aside she has the amount of power that she does because she resonates with with a wide group of people. And actually, another thing that this woman Taffy pointed out in the Daily interview is Taylor Swift has done something kind of interesting that she'll take someone screwing her over in business and she'll turn it into a song. And everyone kind of thinks it's a breakup song. But if you know when she wrote this and what was going on in her life, like it was actually about her terrible manager or, or something like that. And so... And and the the woman uh, Taffy on the Daily was saying that that's actually what connected her with Taylor Swift that she had a really difficult time in her career and she found that these things that Taylor was writing even though they were marketed and packaged as breakup songs, Taffy was kind of like no this is like about the way my bosses treated me, and so I think that's kind of interesting as well. You know what I thought though, um, I think some people were surprised when I was at the Eras tour that I, boy was I getting into some of her breakup songs I mean just just screaming them and um I I think that the reason why Taylor Swift even her craziest breakup songs resonate with women even women who have been married many many years is um we've been screwed over by female friends we've had a female friend break up man oh yeah oh forget a breakup with a man <laughs> oh some man some man who you were dating he ghosted you man get screwed over by a female friend and you will be it screaming hurts. the lyrics to taylor <laughs> yeah. swift songs like oh man illicit affairs came on i'm like sobbing screaming and the I think the little girls in the audience were like, that lesbian is very angry. And I'm like, I'm like Susan, how could you do this Why? to me? I'm like, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, Taylor Swift's music. I, it, it's, it, it, I think it will resonate more with people who have been screwed over by, by female friends. Because there is, I mean, that is like a torpedo in your psyche. When, when a female friend, you know, it does something crazy or betrays you in some way. That is a boy that'll have you scream into some breakup <laughs> songs like nobody's business. So if you ever wondered why, um, why even women who have been married many years, like really resonate even with Taylor's breakups, it's, uh, I mean, a lot of us, like we're thinking of career issues. We're thinking of female friend breakups and, and things like that. So I think that's why everyone's up in arms about her being at the Super Bowls. Cause she just has, an enormous amount of power and it's it's very 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 well earned and the way she got that social power was by being authentic and through that authenticity and through that specificity of her experience 
she showed people that they are real. Okay. While I still uh, have consciousness, um, <laughs> I almost called you Taylor again. That is, I, guys, I'm, I'll be Taylor for the day, listen, sorry. I'm not doing well and I'm not trying to worry you because I was just in the ER. Okay. Like I just got out of the ER. So like, don't worry about me. I'm, I've done it. Like I went to the ER. We just can't figure out what's wrong because my hematologist won't call me back. Okay. Um, let's put a name card on your desk. Caitlin. <laughs> Caitlin, okay, can you tell me, this will be good. You can talk for a second and, and I'll just, if I lose consciousness, Regain just keep <laughs> talking until I come to. All right. Um, you, do, you, do we have this video? Yep. Okay. We JF do. on YouTube.com. <laughs> Look at this. Look at, play the video. Play the video. Okay, this is their whole, two men. Is that two men? Uh, a woman and a man. Okay, I'm sorry. She's, she's very fit. Uh, <laughs> this is, they're holding Caitlin. They're holding her. Mm -hmm. Oh. And, the, and yeah, this is a no sound video because uh, it would be too disturbing to you guys. <laughs> Do, where did the taser hit you? Uh, my upper right shoulder and then my lower left right above my hip. So like perfect spread, as they would say when you go to shoot something with a taser. So what is that perfect spread? Oh, perfect there are spread. two little things. Two little prongs and they just shoot out and they hit you. Like they slap right into you, stab you basically. And then sends lots of volts of electricity through your body. <laughs> it was. What did it feel like? Um, so whenever it first hit, it was like, like in those two concentrated little areas, it was like the wind got knocked out of me and it like hit me. Like I fell and hit, you know, my back or something. And then my whole body's locked up and it hurts. It's not pleasant at all. And you can't do anything. You can't move. I mean, some people can fight it, but I couldn't. There was no way. <laughs> it was miserable for five seconds. Felt like an eternity. Well, and also you're, you're, I mean, you're a petite woman. We've talked about the kibby body types. I am a dramatic Caitlin, we believe, is a gamine. Mm -hmm. And so, like, how tall are you? 5'2". Uh, so they hit you with the same taser that they would use for, like, a 6'7 man? Oh, yeah. Yep. There's no change. <laughs> okay. Listen. I mean, I don't want to say that my friends are better than you guys' <laughs> friends, but I am just asking, how many of you have female friends who are so tough that they would volunteer to be tasered. Now, how does this, is this like someone was outside of Whole Foods with a clipboard? Like, do you <laughs> want to be tasered? How did this situation come about? Uh, so as some people may know, I used to work at the jail as a corrections officer and I became the training so officer. So cool. So when I became the training officer, in order to carry it, when I went through the certification class, the idea was if you end up using it, it's nice to know what it feels like. So heaven forbid you ever it's end nice. up in court. It's nice to know what it feels yeah, like. It's not nice. It was terrible. <laughs> so 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 that what? So if you ever go to court, what? So on the off chance you ever go to court or something, you can be like, you know, I used it knowing full well what it feels like and what they were going to be experiencing. Um, yeah. Ah! Wasn't Wait, I, I would be like, well, I'll take my chances. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know what I would tell? I would tell them I am an active listener. <laughs> yes. So if I ever tase someone, I will do active listening when they tell me about what that felt like. Felt like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, you're so tough. Oh, and by the way, like she was, while she was a corrections officer, not while she was tased, but while she was a corrections <laughs> officer, she was having four kids. She had four kids like right after another. You were yeah. heavily pregnant some of the time that you were working as a corrections officer, right? Yeah, my last one, I was pregnant the entire time I worked there. Um, actually, I just had my third when I started there. Th yeah. Caitlin is the <laughs> toughest person I know. See, this is, listen, if you are a fragile person who needs to live in a bubble and it's like you know you've got a clotting disorder and like <laughs> you're always dying like you did have tough friends have tough friends like i last a couple of weeks ago i was telling you guys like i know kelsey gillespie she's super sporty she did she had just had a baby like a, her third or fourth or something and she did one of those um it's not iron man oh like american gladiator oh, wow. competitions i've got caitlin over here <laughs> working corrections when she's pregnant being tased so if if you add no value to society other than just talking smack on your podcast, <laughs> you can collect friends who actually like get out there and do interesting things and are tough and interesting. I will say also, Caitlin comes to a lot of my shows. So if anyone ever thinks they're going to cause problems <laughs> at my show, uh, it, it it's funny too. I think I told you guys that when when I was when we were setting. Um, 
setting everything for my comedy special, which comes out, I think, in April. I think. Mark your calendars. Just mark out. Mark the whole month of April. Just, <laughs> Just put on your month. calendar. <laughs> Jen's comedy special comes out sometime April 2024. Um, I was telling the guys, they said, um, obviously, this is a filming. We want to make sure that no one gets rowdy. And I said, okay, well, um, I, my podcast producer uh, was a corrections officer, so I think it'll be fine. When I introduced them to five two blonde, <laughs> cute, beautiful Caitlin, I don't think that's the corrections <laughs> officer who was going to get people in line that they were imagining. Um, well, Caitlin's the toughest person I know. Um, I just find that so interesting. I am trying to think what reward would have to be offered to me <laughs> for me to volunteer to get tasered. I mean, if they were like, here is a treasure chest of pirate's booty. <laughs> they open it up and it is gold bars, gems, diamond necklaces draped over golden goblets <laughs> encrusted with rubies and emeralds. And they'd say, you can just take this box if we can just taser you. I, no way. I, I would I would slam the box shut. I'd be like, listen, I, I can buy replicas of all that on Sheen for two dollars. Like I don't nobody will know the difference. It's not like I leave the house anymore now that I'm an invalid, so I can just be on Instagram with my two dollar Sheen jewelry, put on an Instagram filter, everyone will think I'm living large. I don't care. There's like there's nothing. There's nothing that could compel me to be tased. I, and I wouldn't care at all about that argument of like, well, if you're going to use it on someone, I'd be like, well, I'd say, look, I don't act the fool and threaten officers of the law. So I don't think I'll be tased. <laughs> I think it'll be fine. Like, cause that, I mean, by that logic, I mean, what do you need to get shot to? I mean, like, I mean, come on. You know. God, that's to me. I mean, like, does a dentist have to have a root canal? Like I, they I should. If well, we'll actually, honest. that's it. You know what? I'm actually coming around. You know what? <laughs> actually, Caitlin. Okay, hang on. <clears throat> I'd like to give everyone at my hematologist's office a dire medical issue, but they have to call me to get scheduled to deal with it. <laughs> and I'll be like, there's a process. There's a process. Okay, so, all right. Well, those are, uh, we, we just really nailed the intro subjects there. Caitlin got tased. <laughs> um, Taylor Swift has all the social power she does because she's deeply authentic and that's what you should be too. All right, so let's move on. Before we move on to um, my life-threatening situation that we can't possibly get resolved, <laughs> um, let me tell you, I did do the, Vili the Village Hustle Patreon for this week. It was not easy, clearly. I'm, I'm not doing well, but I did it. And I specifically talked about survival mode, we have referenced this before, but I've never laid out what survival mode should look like for you while actually in survival mode. That is uh, Village Hustle episode 26 on the Patreon. You can find details, patreon.com slash this is Jen. Link is in the show notes and uh, you get access to all the archives and, and all of that when you sign up. And uh, so I, I did my the the keys to survival mode and then i also went into a little more some other things that have been going on over here some family medical issues that came up at the same time as my medical issues and i went into all the details of here's what the emergency room said here's why you know we can't figure it out so if, if anyone cares about all of these medical details and then how what survival mode looks like in our house that is on the village hustle patreon and then of course we always do the after party where we keep chatting after each episode and that is also available on patreon.com slash this is jen okay you guys want to hear something crazy do you remember that i was on dr drew uh i think that episode came out i don't know like december it was a couple months ago and um I, I put this clip on my Instagram stories, but a lot of you didn't see it. So this, so when Dr. Drew found out about my blood clotting disorder, here is what he had to say. We, I was going to say, putting yeah. you on birth control pill may have its own risks. Exactly. So, so right. Do you and, have to take Coumadin all the time or anything, or do you do anything else? I should. I really should. Or Eliquis or one of those? I, yeah, I should, Dr. Drew. I definitely should. <laughs> but they said it was... <laughs> 
you're looking at me. <laughs> we, we, because it's you used I could the way people use lifestyle. <laughs> like there was, yeah, exactly. I was glossing over yeah. a lot. I'm trying to seem less crazy than I am. This is my first show on your podcast. I'm trying to seem it's, like it's a normal good. human you, being. You are normal. You are bright as hell. You're fascinating. <laughs> but you should be taking some eloquence. Or some I, okay, list. you know what? I'll start that tomorrow. I will. Yeah. Or, or at least a low dose or something. Yeah, okay, man. Okay, you know what's crazy is I meant to bring this up in an episode before my diagnosis when I had no idea that anything was wrong. That that uh, clip that we have there, I got that clip a few weeks ago before my diagnosis. Here's what else is crazy. When we do media on these podcast episodes, we have to set it up in a special way to, to show it on, on YouTube for both of the people who watch these episodes so that they can <laughs> see it. And... Um, so it's so ev- for every episode we take out the stuff we used in the last episode and then we add in the stuff for this episode and sometimes we don't use clips but then we take them out long story short that Dr. Drew clip remained in the media that we could potentially play so Caitlin saw me fussing around on my phone looking for it and she's like it, it's right here the Dr. Drew clip where he told you that you should be on blood thinners is it's been sitting here staring me in the face. This is God leading me on like a, a scavenger hunt. You know, like, hey, do you see all the hints I'm sending you that maybe you should deal with your blood clotting disorder? Now, for everyone who wants to say I was irresponsible for not um, doing what Dr. Drew said I should do, first of all, I was told that my blood clotting disorder probably is only an issue in pregnancy, and I wasn't pregnant. And second of all, this stuff costs, I mean, the, the dose I am on right now is $718 and some number of cents per month. You know what? I actually have a clip of this that we can play of me finding out what my blood thinner costs. That was a fun moment. That was really great. I really enjoyed that. Um, okay, here it is. Caitlin, can I airdrop it to you? Yes. Um, so... Uh, it's expensive, basically. And it and even like a, a low dose or whatever. I mean, we're still talking hundreds of dollars per month. So that's one of the reasons that I didn't do it. Also, I'm having a weird reaction to it, blah, blah, blah. So there were reasons. I had my reasons for not um for not doing that. So uh Dr. Drew called it. He called it. And now um, I actually have a clip of the moment that I found out what this medicine costs here. Caitlin, play this, play this clip here. This was fun. This was a very flattering shot of me. <laughs> here I am at the pharmacy. I'm wearing my coat. Yeah. Uh, did you want to pick that one up? Yes. Were you wearing the cost? Uh, what's the cost? Uh, $718.63. Oh, 718. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I need it. I'll just get it. Right, Patreon.com slash. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So annoying. Uh, so yeah, so I, I'm, on, I'm on that dose for a while. And, and so then it'll go down, but it, it's still expensive. That's why I wasn't on it. Okay, so um, my life is a dumpster fire right now. Uh, I have a blood clot that we are trying to treat but the medicine that we are using to treat it is causing some very strange symptoms and I am really not feeling well and I haven't felt well in a long time and I'm learning to embrace the dumpster fire (laughs) I'm learning that when your life is a dumpster fire, you can't push against it. You can't, you can't <laughs> wish you had a different life. You can't wish you had a life like your sister-in-law who just got on the gram and was <laughs> like, I just, I'm so enjoying our trip to the Maldives and uh, all my clothes are too big. They're too loose. Cause like, am I, you know, just I'm in really good shape and I lost a lot of weight. You can't wish to be her because She's on the blessed track and you're on the dumpster fire track and all it's going to do is drive you insane if you wish that your life was anything other than a dumpster fire. What you have to do is you got to kind of fix up your your dumpster, put some streamers up, you know, <laughs> put some um put some up lights in it, like get some strip lights for your dumpster and just have a party 
in the midst of the dumpster fire because that's the best that you are <laughs> going to be able to do. That's the key. So I honestly, I think that's my biggest lesson here. So the situation that I am in is that I seem to be having a weird reaction to the medicine that I'm on, which would maybe be expected since uh, I, I have a pretty rare clotting disorder. It, well, it's it's rare to begin with. Uh, it's called factor two. But then I got it from both parents, which is there are maybe 12 people in the United States who are homozygous with this with this factor two thing so nobody knows anything really about how how the you know how drugs would interact with this disorder and and things like that so that is why i really need to see a hematologist because even the emergency room people they're like please leave us out of this please (laughs) take us out of this group chat we don't know what to do with someone with your clotting disorder we just really want to be taken out of this loop so uh as of this recording i was diagnosed with the deep vein thrombosis more than a week ago and the er said we don't know what to do but we'll just put you on this really heavy uh dose of this blood thinner the pharmacist personally called me and said um are you sure about this dose? And I said, well, no. She said, well, what does your hematologist think? And I said, yeah, I can't, I can't get in touch with them. And she said, well, that's a problem because you, I mean, you know, the ERs aren't hematologists. Like they don't necessarily, they, they can give you the standard stuff. But anyway, I actually have video of what I have been going through trying to get an appointment with my hematologist. Just play the first one, Caitlin. <laughs> Um, we're, we're just going to, you know, there's this videos. wizard of Oz figure in your office who is supposed to be calling me to get me set, like reestablished as a patient and the they're not calling me. And like, I have some symptoms of potentially internal bleeding with this medicine, but the ER doesn't want to touch it because I have internal bleeding symptoms, but we're also trying to teach a DV, a, treat a DVT. So they're like, please see a hematologist, but this person is not calling me back to get me like reset up as a patient. Is there anything I can do to like call this person or or expedite this? Um, uh, Hang on, let me just flick through. So this, uh, by the way, this was the fourth business day in a row that I had called them. I called them Monday, I called them Tuesday, I called them Wednesday. So these recordings you're hearing are from Thursday. And yes, I did put a filter on those videos because if these are going to be the last videos I ever create because I can't get medical care, uh, my skin is going to be looking good. Play the next video, Caitlin. Oh, and the pharmacist actually called me and was like, are you sure about this? And and she was like, what does your hematologist think? And I told you guys that's me. So I, that's me telling the receptionist what I just told you. All right, play the third one. Is there anything else I can do to get an appointment? I mean, I, I am a patient. Okay. It, and and so there's a pro- even though I am a patient, there's a process for, like, why can't I just make an appointment? Because after three years, you can't just make an appointment if you haven't seen a doctor. You have to. It's a, the process starts again. Okay, so like, and you the, reestablish yourself. Okay, and you have to go through the new patient schedulers, which is who you're waiting on, not the nurse, not the scheduler, yeah. but a new patient scheduler. Okay, and and there's and is there any estimate of, you know, when they might call me because I I'm not, you know, feeling great. It's, I don't have a I don't have a I don't have a. I hate that's to- a no. That's a no. Yeah. Another day, another business day passed. Uh, we are recording this after the end of that week, and no, no, I still do not have a hematologist appointment uh we are working on it and i I've, I've turned the situation over to my mom and my husband as i said earlier and now everyone is going to have a lot of regrets mm-hmm. everyone is going to really <laughs> wish yes. that they had handled this differently um i actually asked i think video four is where i said like can you just run this by the doctor like can you just run this by the doctor play video four what did i say there um, is is there any way we could like Ask the doctor if he wants to escalate this. I feel like if Dr. Koss heard. That's, that would have to, no, he's part of the process too. Once we get. No, no, That's no, you can't. No. So I had to go back to the ER and 
yeah, they ran a bunch of tests and they're like, look, we, can you please, can you please just go to your hematologist? <laughs> we trying. don't know. <laughs> we don't know because we don't know what to do with people with ear clotting disorder. Um, so here's, here's friends, the message that I want to share with you. My husband took me aside because I ended up crying about all of this uh, yesterday because it was not just the lack of medical treatment. It was also the, uh, there are just some things going on in my career that are frustrating because on the one hand, I have a lot of good things going on. Major record label picks up my comedy special, which is massive, a huge win. And so we're, we're working on a release date. Nate Bergazzi posts my stand-up clips on his main feeds. Facebook, Instagram tags me like, hey, everyone, check out Jen Fuller. She's great. So great. I mean, a lot of things are coming together. The comedy millions are, they're just, we're just on the brink. But there are some other areas where I've just been stalled. I, I'm sure you've been through something like this where it's like there's certain areas where I can't make progress to save my life. It's just one one sticking point after another. I am constantly, constantly hitting and it just it feels like I'm treading water. And every time I try to move forward, I just end up back in a treading water situation. And so it just kind of got to me. Well, I just I the reason I started crying is because I said it's like I'm I'm trying to move forward with my health. I'm trying to move forward with my career. Frankly, I was trying to move forward with my diet. You know, I, I came up with that eating plan that was working really, really, really well. And then and then all this stuff happened. And um I just, it, this eating plan, it's actually pretty easy to do, but it takes a lot of planning so that you have all the right foods and all that. And I just, I don't have the mental energy to do all of that planning right now. So even that, the one nice thing I had going that I, I was, you know, I, I was losing weight and I was very happy with that, that has stopped. And, and so I just started crying and I, I told Joe, I just, it's like, I just can't move forward in any area. I'm just treading water in every possible area of life. And my sweet husband said, um, Jen, there's something I want to show you that I I think will, um, it'll just help your heart. It'll just like be encouraging to you. And I think, I think maybe these are inspired words that you need to hear in your time of need. And he pulled up this clip that we are about to play that is <laughs> an interview with legendary NFL running back Marshawn Lynch. That's when it just clicked in my mind that if you just run through somebody's face, a lot of people ain't going to be able to take that over and over and over and over and <laughs> over and 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 over again. They just not gonna want that. Think there's a deeper metaphor there? Run through a motherfucker face. <laughs> then you don't have to worry about them no more. This is what I seriously thought that my husband was going to play a Bible verse for me, like a maybe a Matt Mare song, maybe you know some some song about like we will overcome with the help of God. Instead, he plays me the run through a MF face. Marshawn Lynch clip. And and for my Catholic listeners, MF stands for mediocre fellow. <laughs> Run through a mediocre fellow's face. Uh, yeah. and, and 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 he said, "Look, when you're stuck, when you're treading water in every area of life, you have to have that Marshawn Lynch attitude of I'm just not going to stop. I'm not, I will keep sending emails. I will keep sending texts. I will keep calling. And then here's the thing. If you feel as bad as I feel, we have now paused this podcast. How many times, Caitlin? Three or Three four? Separate. Three separate. Three <laughs> separate times. Um, in my whole broadcasting career, I mean, obviously I didn't have the option at SiriusXM, but I mean, I've been doing this podcast once a week mm -hmm. since 2020 we've never paused, I, like we've never paused it. And I feel so bad, we've had to pause three times 
that there's a there's a concerning stat. Anyone who knows me knows I don't pause my recordings. Ever. 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 So when you feel as bad as I feel, it's not easy to get up and run through a MF mediocre fellow's <laughs> face. But in that case, you need to assemble a team. You need to let people know that you're struggling. And when they offer to help you, you need to say, okay, okay, I, I need I need help. I need you to run through the MF's <laughs> face. And by the way, that's what I've done with the hematologist. It was finally on Friday morning when they still hadn't gotten me an appointment. My mom had said she would go down there and yell at them. And by the time I gave her the green light, the the work week was over, but I think she might I, I think she might actually do it. So sometimes you do not feel well enough. But that's where you need to assemble your village, reach out to people. It, if you have any Instagram, Facebook, whatever account, just just put it out there. Guys, we're struggling. We need prayers. And if anyone's available to help, let me know. You turn over some control. You accept people's offers to help. Because that that is when, when you're stuck and when you're in a dumpster fire, what Marshawn Lynch said is it's honestly, that's that is the right way. You got to keep calling doctor's offices. You've, I mean, literally show up or have someone else show up. Like in my career, I need to just keep keep making phone calls, keep sending emails. Like, hey guys, didn't hear back, just wanted to check in. Not being rude. I won't be rude. I'm not rude to people. I'm very non-confrontational. But I'm not going to stop. And as bad as I feel, I can still send a follow-up like, hey, just wanted to check in, make sure you guys saw this. Um email. I can still do that. That doesn't take a lot of energy. So even when you are drowning and everyone's sick and everything's difficult, you can still run through an MF (laughs) phase. You can still do it. You might just need to ask for help getting it done. And I think I'm going to end this podcast episode there. This is a shorter episode than usual because guys, I'm dying. I don't feel good. So that's where we end it. Join the Patreon so I can pay for my very expensive medication. <laughs> I'm I'm kidding. Guys, we'll be fine. I'm, I'm kidding about that part of it. But I'm not kidding about joining the Patreon. You should actually join it because um, it's just hot fire content. You'll love it. Patreon.com slash this is Jen. And if I'm alive... We'll be back with you next week here on the Jen Fulweiler Show.